Hopefully we're going to hit you guys always on time. Karen, what's up? Kasim, what's up? I see you guys first in the room. Uh, Dre's in here. Dre, how's it going with your reading over there? Good. Good? What chapter are we on? We are on 11. 11. My boy is excited. He's over there reading chapters over here while I'm preparing for you guys and getting ready. And I'll bring you guys a great message tonight about controlling your emotions. And That's I'm been the thing. Mercy Watson. Mercy Watson, he's reading over here, right? So we're bringing you guys. Oh, is it working now? I see people. Okay, can everybody see me? Type live action right now if we live action. We had an interruption somehow of the feed there, but it's okay. Everybody still with me? Can we still hang? <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Someone type live action right now so I know we're still at it and we're still live so I can get this lecture going. I'm not talking to myself. Okay, we live action. I see you. Dijon, ready player. Utham. Okay, we're live action now. Thank you. Man, with technical difficulties. You guys know te technology is not my thing. You want to say hi? Come here. You guys can't see him because I'm standing up. But Dre's in here hanging out today. Hello. All right. Go chill, bud. Okay. So we're talking about emotional regulation. Dre's in the building. All right. Hanging out with us. All right. So <laughs> we are live. We are live. This is live, guys. This is no no bull. We're going to go raw. Like, this is live. Can, can everybody give me some slack? Can everybody still be like, can, we, can it be okay that we had a flub with the technology? Can we still roll? Can we get at it? Can we get better? Can we learn? Okay, so let's do it. So I'm going to restart because clearly y'all didn't hear. I was sitting there talking to myself. I was like, oh, man, I'm hitting it. And then nobody was responding. I was like, okay, something must have happened. It was the feed. Okay. So if you're now rejoining me, I'm Dr. Pintet, y'all. I'm the study doc. Uh, make sure you guys, I like to go live, I like to talk to the people, be amongst the people, we like to teach, we like to learn. Um, today we got three pages of notes to learn from. So if this is your first time with me, take a second, subscribe, right? Turn on notifications for my YouTube channel and take the second right now to let me know I'm not alone. Let me know this feed is still strong by liking the video right now. Okay, so yes, I'm breaking up your study session with them, that's what I'm doing right now. All right, so we're talking about emotional regulation and controlling our emotions. So the first thing we wanna talk about guys is understanding what emotional regulation is which is our ability to exert control over one's emotional state. And tonight, this is so important you guys hear the words that I'm going to be using for you guys because specificity and clarity in word choice matters when we're trying to attack real problems, okay? And one of the things we have to recognize about life is that all things are truly possible. We can do anything in this whole world, technically. We have the potential to do that but not all of us have the ability to do that in this moment. And the separator there, the gap there, is that abilities, skills, have to be developed, have to be nourished. They don't just exist. Potential exists. But the fulfillment of that potential is you working and developing abilities and skills to actualize that potential. Does that make sense? So emotional regulation is the ability to exert control over one's emotions. So when we say, hey, just... Take charge of your emotions. That's not something that's an eight in us, right? And you guys see it with children, that children have an inability to regulate their emotions. I want it now, right? I just show my kids Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. They loved it, the Oompa Loompas. Dre, you like the Oompa Loompas? Yeah. Oompa Loompa. Exactly, Dre knows how to finish the song up. Everybody give a like for Dre right now, Oompa Loompa, okay? So, <laughs> so, we have to understand that that's the way we are as children. When we are born, when we are young people, right? We, we are spontaneous. We just do things out of emotion. We just act. We just Did go. I finish the book. Nice. The whole book. Way to go. Congratulations. My son just finished the chapter book. He's very excited. Okay. So we have to recognize that these skills are developed. In particular, right, for emotional regulation, as children, as young people, we start with very little ability to control it. We have to develop that. We have to actively pursue that, okay? So as part of this, if we want to develop this ability, if we want to have control of our emotions, like most areas where we want to improve in our lives, where does it start, guys? It starts with mindset. Oh, why am I always preaching, hey, get into my successful student 21 day mindset makeover course? Why am I always talking to you guys about mindset things? It's so funny because so many students misunderstand, right? And they're like, oh yeah, Dr. Pines is a motivational speaker. I'm like, no, I'm a transformational speaker. 
And the big difference, and this is important for you guys, right? So again, we're talking about specificity tonight, is that motivation is fleeting. A lot of times you guys go to social media looking for a motivation boost. But really what you need to be looking for is a mindset shift. Hear me and hear me now. A lot of you guys are looking for motivation, but emotions, as we're going to talk about, are up and down. Really what you need is a mindset shift. And that's what I do for students is I shift mindsets. And the alternative word for a mindset is a perspective. This plays in to everything you do because how we see things, right? Our mindset, right, is our, our mind's eye into the world. It's how we see the world. It's how we see ourselves in that world. And so it's very important without the right mindset, without the right perspective, without the right lens, we can't have the vision to see what we could be and what could be and what could happen in our possibility. Yes, yes. And so for so many of us, we're stuck in limiting mindsets. We have limited lenses that don't allow us to see telephonically far enough into our potential. And so we fall short. Does that make sense to everybody? So with that being said, we have to change our perspective, our vantage point of how we see our emotions, ourselves, and how the external world impacts those emotions. The problem with perspectives and mindsets is that our mindsets are built from our experience. And so because of that, they're subjective. However, we live, believe it or not, in an objective world. Yes, save this live. If you guys want this live, get over to my YouTube channel right now, The Study Doc on YouTube. Okay, we live in an objective world, accepted, rejected, A, B, successful, not successful, right? It's, it's, it's clear, objective for the most part, right? But we are subjective emotional beings. And so our lens is subjective, colored by our experiences, our emotions, our feelings, and so forth. And so we're trying to navigate a objective world with a subjective lens. And it's very, very difficult. And so we have to correctly align our subjective lens. And as Mark Twain says, the trouble with the world is not that people know too little, it's that they know so many things that just aren't so. I need you guys to hear that and listen to that. The problem with the world is not that people know too little, it's that they know so many things that just aren't so. And for a lot of you guys as students, you have a track record that you're not pleased with. You have had many experiences that are not positive experiences. Can we all agree on this? Does everybody hear what I'm saying right now? Dijon, comment right now. Let me know I'm not alone. I, I hate feeling like I'm alone, y'all. I'm live action right now. My kids, my son has now left me. I'm here. Don't make me feel alone, y'all. Do we understand what I'm saying right now? How many of you guys... Based on your prior experience, you feel less than adequate. You feel insufficient. How many of you guys feel negative about yourself? You feel sad about yourself. You feel mad at yourself. You feel regretful about yourself. You feel pessimistic about yourself. Christina says we are here. Thank you. Okay. How many of you guys are there? I'm seeing yes. Yep. Yep. I'm seeing the boxes. I appreciate that. Okay. So, shooketh, yes. Do we understand? So now, if we have that perspective about ourselves and we have that perspective about things, it changes everything. And so in this case, we have our perspective, our mindset towards our emotions and towards what those emotions mean towards what we can do. And so before... Right To really, really, really address and take control of your emotions, the first thing and the most powerful thing you can do is change your mindset, change your perspective of what emotions are and how you function with those emotions. Are you guys ready? So what I'm going to walk you guys through here is three different categories. Love you too, bud. Sweet dreams. It's three different categories of dysfunctional mindsets towards emotion. Dysfunctional perceptions, perspectives, towards emotions. And I'm gonna walk you through the dysfunction, these three common ones that a lot of us suffer in three different areas. And then I'm gonna walk you through the functional mindset that I want you to shift to. And then I'm gonna give you an example for each of how you could implement and how people have implemented before. Does all this make sense, everybody? 
I got to keep checking the feed tonight because apparently something's happened with the feed. So if you guys are with me, I know it's late. My East Coast people, it's like 10 o'clock something at night. But if you're here and you're ready to learn, then let me gosh darn freaking know it. Don't be sitting there silently. Thank you. Light the freaking box up. It's ridiculous. Don't make me be alone. Right? Share this out right now. I'm live right now. Share this out. Let people come through. Okay. So the first dysfunctional perspective that so many of us have. And when I hit your dysfunctional perspective, yes, East Coast Reggie, when I hit your dysfunctional perspective, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, thank you. Okay. Joylin, when I hit your dysfunctional perspective, I want you to be like, me. And then I want you guys to pay close attention. I want you guys to change it. All right. So the first dysfunctional perspective or the first area we must recognize that emotions are not black and white. We must recognize this. That's the recognition we must make. And so that's the, 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 the position we need to be in. Where most of us exist, the dysfunctional perspective is this. This is what we say to ourselves. This is what we believe that's dysfunctional. Positive emotional states, happy, joy, right? Fulfilled, excited positive emotional states okay are the absence of negative emotions negative emotions being sadness fear anxiety anger we look at emotions and how we are in our overall emotional state as black and white we see in order to be happy i must not be sad does everybody understand what I'm saying right now? How many of you guys feel like, man, only way I can be happy is if all the stress is gone, if all the sadness is gone. If I, uh, in order to be happy, in order to be excited, that state requires that I have no negative emotions up inside me. How many of you guys are there? I see people lighting the box up. I appreciate y'all honestly talking, right? Because we're here to learn, right? Let's reset this. We are here talking about emotional regulation. That's how a lot of people are. That's the dysfunctional perspective. The perspective that you need to get to is a perspective of understanding that the absence of negative emotion is not a requirement for being in a positive emotional state. Does everybody understand what I'm saying right now? The absence of negativity is not required for you to be positive, for you to be optimistic for you to be excited, for you to be happy. And if we can understand the dysfunction and flip that to this functional perspective, it changes everything. Are you ready? The example is, and the way you act this out, is that if we can change our belief from saying, hmm, it's not that I have to have no negative emotions, it's just that I have to find a way for a positive to dominate my emotional state. So now we can shift, right? By having that perspective, we can now shift what we're trying to achieve and our actions to achieve that become practical, become feasible. Because now all we have to say to ourselves is, listen, I don't have to be completely happy. I don't have to be no sadness. I don't have to have no worries. I just have to make sure that my happiness outweighs the sadness that my excitement outweighs my fear and what's amazing about this guys and the literature on this the science on this right because we talk facts here right the science on this is that so many people think right for you guys as students you procrastinate you put off you don't go for the opportunity because you're worried you're so scared of not succeeding so you are inactive you are paralyzed right you are paralyzed by that negativity, by that doubt, by the, all these things. To free yourself from that par paralysis, to free yourself from that standstill, that inertia of negativity doesn't require the loss of that negativity, doesn't require massive amounts of positivity. It only requires that you have slightly more positivity. Just enough positivity, just enough. It's like a ball atop the hill. Just enough positivity to get the ball rolling down the hill. So you need just enough positivity to tilt the scales, to break the inertia and start the ball rolling. 
And if you can do that, guys, you'll be in a positive mental state and you'll have positive action. Does that make sense? Does, does, does this make sense to people? And we're going to get really practical here in a second, but we have to understand the larger concept. Am I making sense to people? Am I making sense? Okay. Exactly. Perfect. I'm making sense. People are understanding. Okay. Yes. I wish they were teaching this in college. That's why colleges bring me in to teach this stuff, right? We have to understand this. If you guys want to learn more on this stuff, we're going to learn a ton today. But if you guys are like, man, I want my mindset completely flipped. I have my course, the successful student mindset makeover. Okay. It's in the description. You guys can get it for a discount in the description box. Okay. So here we go. The example, the practical example of this is that we understand that this world is full of negativity. This world is full of stressors. This world that we react with, that we see, is full of badness. Look at the news, look at everything. It's full of, ugh. people are full of pessimism, right? Ugh, ugh. Negativity. Understanding that, we can then see that every single day as we wake up, is another day where we're gonna be fed negativity, negativity, negativity. We're gonna experience hardship, struggle, well, all these things, everything that tears us down, that takes our, our meter and tilts it towards negativity. So if we understand that, and we understand that we have to keep it tilted towards positive just a little bit, then one key thing you can do to immediately make yourself more positive and more productive is to front load. And so if you guys have ever heard me talk, I talk a lot about front loading. It is the key to life, y'all, front loading. I am a master at front loading. I teach my students a full front loading system. We front load everything you can imagine. We front load everything. Front loading is important because you've just woken up. Right? And what does front loading mean? It means doing what is typically difficult, what right, is typically something negative or stress inducing. We do it first in the day, in the week, in our lives, in everything. Difficult first. Why? Because if we do that, in the example of a day, if we wake up, oh, rub your eyes. You've just rested for eight hours, hopefully, okay? Eight hours of sleep is important. At that point, you don't have all the stressors of the day making you feel negative. So if you can wake up in that blank slate and you can start doing work, What's amazing is you're going to do that work and as you do it and as you get something positive, something productive done to start your day, what you've done is you've started the ball rolling. You've built up a bank of positivity, a bank of productivity. So now your skill, your scale is tilted such that the rest of the day will roll forward better. You will be in a more positive state because you got something positive done first thing in the day. This is why it feels so good for some of you guys who like to work out. How good does it feel to get that pump in first thing in the morning? How good does it feel to go on a run first thing in the morning? Why does it feel so good? Because we're, we're a blank slate, right? Fenderbach just said, right? Tabula, tabula rasa, we're a blank slate. And now on that slate, we're writing positive, good juice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Letting all those good endorphins soak in. And so if we do that, we tilt the skills, and then we're going to be more positive throughout that day. And then we're going to want that positivity to continue. So we're going to replicate that. And then we're going to put days and days and days of good work together. And then all of a sudden, we're a straight A student. Does that make sense to everybody? That's step one, right? So this is one example. The second example is for some of you guys, you want to go study. It's time to study. But you cannot will yourself to study. So what do you do? Right? Utham just talked about, talk about how I'm interrupting his study session right now. You guys turn to social media to soothe yourself. Oh, I just can't study right now. Couldn't bear it. I hate studying. So I'm going to go to my social media feed. And I'm going to scroll. And next thing you know, hours have gone by and you have not gotten better. You've not been productive. And now you're even more angry, you're even more upset. You're even more negative than you were before. Again, tilting you the wrong way. So what I teach my students to do is to establish, to develop and establish their own study, pre-study routine. So before my students sit down to study, we don't allow ourselves to say, oh, studying is difficult. We don't allow ourselves to say, oh, I'm just going to do something to waste some time. We have a routine that allows us to create, to increase, to amplify 
positive feelings. And at the same time, to reduce, to push away, to slide under the rug, the negative feelings we may be having. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? So before we start studying, we don't just say, oh, we're going to study. We say, no, we're going to do our pre-study routine. And I have a whole lengthy thing. We talk about like all these different things that we're going to do. It's, it's multi-modality. It's physical. It's emotional. It's, we work through all these things to build up positivity, forward momentum, leading into our study session, such that we tilt the scale so we can have a great study session. And so it wards off procrastination. So it's an anti-procrastination habit is a pre-study routine and an effective one not going to your feed. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> right? Chantel said, I've been doing the opposite, uh, getting the easier things done early. And by the end of the day, I'm so tired to do the tougher tasks, right? That's what we want to do. So does everybody see what I'm saying right there? I'm going to keep asking this because the feed is messed up today, but it's important you guys get this message. I'm Dr. Pineset. We're talking about emotional regulation. If you have not already liked this video right now, take a second. Okay. Does everybody understand that? So the first area is that emotions are not black and white, they are gray. And all we have to do to be effective, to feel better and to be better and to do better is tilt the scale slightly positive. And we can do this in numerous ways and we talk about two examples. The second thing that I want you guys to understand about emotions is that you have to understand that you can separate your emotional state from your activity state, okay? I say this because the dysfunctional perspective that many students carry is that emotions are dependent on external stimuli. The key word being dependent and external. So we say our emotions are dependent, right? Independent, dependent variable. <laughs> our emotions are dependent on what happens outside of us and what stimulus we receive. So if someone is mean to us, that's an external stimulus. We receive that and now I must feel a way based off of that. So that's an external stimulus, yes? So external stimuli are what we experience, what we do and what is done to us. And for many students, we feel dependent on that. That's the dysfunctional behavior. Oh, if Chris Rock says a joke about my wife and I'm already frustrated, I must be super frustrated and I must go up and slap him. Okay, that's the dysfunctional thinking. The functional thinking is emotions are not dependent. They are derived largely from external stimuli. Not dependent, but derived. And the cool thing about things being derived from something is that we can do what? Further derivations. And we can alter the situation. Yes, yes. So your emotions largely come from what is happening outside you. What happens to you, what you experience, what people do to you. But they're derived, not dependent on that. So you can feel, you can feel differently. You can have a different emotion than perhaps what the external stimuli was. And we can do this, right? We can have the ability, right? So this is important. We're going back to ability. We can have the ability to first reject stimuli. So the number one power that we fail to recognize because how we feel for most of us is really dependent on what's outside of us, our external stimuli, what comes into our, our mind space, right? Through our, through our lens. We have the ability to say no, to reject negative external stimuli. Sometimes people think I'm mean because I say, I don't have any tolerance for your laziness. I am allergic to laziness. I am allergic to negative people. I have a somatic condition <laughs> when it comes to laziness and negative people. I think in my mind that I am allergic to negativity and laziness and haters. And it turns out because I believe it so strong I have a full body visceral reaction to negativity. I believe it. I cannot have negativity around me. Why? Because I've chosen to reject negativity. So negative people are not allowed around me. Lazy people, not allowed around me. I have zero tolerance for it. I reject that external stimuli. If you want to be negative, fine, but go be negative over there because I reject you. 
But for many of us as students, how many of you guys allow negative mother people <laughs> to be around you? Come on now. How many of you guys have friends, have family, have people who all they do is put pressure on you? All they do is bring pessimism to you, right? The two Ps, pressure and pessimism. Who needs more pressure in this day and age? How many of you guys have these people around you? And, and Di, you're exactly right. It's not that easy to reject, but we're going to talk about it. Can we talk about it? Can I teach? I know we're at 25 minutes, and I know you guys are like, it's TikTok culture. We got five minutes, but can I teach? If you guys would allow me to teach, I'll teach you. Die. What matters most to you in this world? This is so important. This is so important, guys. Who here is clear on what matters most to them in this world? Because for many of us, we aren't clear on what matters most. And because we aren't clear on what our value system is, we have a flawed value system that is placed on us by other people or can be manipulated by others. And when die, you say that it's difficult to reject negative people. It's because the value system that society places on us is that we have to be polite, that we have to tolerate how people talk to us. Does everybody understand what I'm saying here? This includes your parents. We have a societal system where we say the child is beholden and must respect their parent. They must never speak out to their parent. They must do as they're told. Who has heard this? Who feels this? Oh, I can't tell my mom that her incessant phone calls are bothering me. I can't tell my parents that them threatening to cut me off while I'm studying for the MCAT is not helping me prepare effectively. How can we tell our parents who raised us who we are beholden to for forever? How can we tell them this? The issue is, is that society's value system has you jacked up. And the truth and the reality, and right, and again, it's what we talk about in coaching all the time. If you guys remember my coaching programs, we sit in all the time, and a student has an issue, and we, we attack it. Here's your issue, bam, we're doing this, right? And so again, I'll give you the example here. So I have a student, and this student comes from an abusive home. Abusive. Parents don't support him, it's crazy, it's abusive, okay? Yet, as an adult, he continued to live in this environment because he thought he had to. I must, these are my parents. I must. And we got on a coaching session. I said, no, you do not have to deal with that. You do not have to be in that environment. And he said, but they support me financially. I said, well, then you got to figure out how to support yourself financially. You got to figure out how to get out of there, how to be, how to escape it. This man moved across the country, y'all. Of course, he went through the steps of how to get all this stuff done. He moved across the country, got a job, stepped out of school, got to work, got his own place. Went back into school. And now he's thriving. Straight A's. He's happy. Got a lady in his life. Things have changed for him. He's seeing a therapist. Doing all these things. We, we, right, we, we talk about some things and put some things in place. But he had to be shooken, shook it, shaken, free of a flawed perspective of, oh, I must take this abuse because they're my parents. But I had him get clear on what really matters to him. And what matters to him is being happy. What matters to him is becoming the physician. And I said, you're not going to be happy or a physician if you stay there. So we have to make moves. We've got to get clear on our value system and make the move. Right? Essential says, my family didn't graduate college or never went, so they don't know. Now I'm starting this journey and I'm always studying. They are not used to it. And Essential, I, I, I face that. If you guys don't know my story, I'm first generation, right? And when I left for college, you know what my dad told me? He said, hey, son. <laughs> he said, don't flunk out and embarrass us. He said, college is easy, just work hard. And he's like, if you think that's hard, try having a job. It's literally three things he told me, verbatim. But we have to break that, y'all. We have to break that. Yes, I have tons of nursing students. 
If you guys are confused about my programs, please get to my website. I have nursing students, dental students, medical students, engineers, math majors. Matthew, last night we have math, we got high school students. We're all over the map because it's about succeeding, okay, and changing healthy perspectives. All right, so let's continue. Can we continue? Does that make sense, Die, I'm, try I'm trying to teach while we're on here. I apologize for talking to one person, but this is what we have to do, right? We have to adjust. You guys came here to get better. So, Die, I hope that helped you. I hope you understand what I'm saying right now. It's hard, but you got to change your value alignment and understand what's important to you and understand what things are stopping you from being that. Okay. Additionally, okay? So, emotions are not dependent on external stimuli. Emotions, we can reject stimuli. We just say no to it. Get those people away from us, okay? The second thing we can have the ability to do if we develop it, I'm glad that makes sense, Di. Okay. If we develop it, is that we can modify external stimuli. We can modify, we can change, we can alter, we can shape how this external stimuli is perceived by substituting what I call surrogate stimuli. Write that down. Surrogate stimuli. That's my word. And we have to have a word for it, right? Because when we're looking for it, right? When we're trying to be action-oriented, we're looking for it. Okay, what did I try to say? We have to have a word for it. Surrogate stimuli. A replacement stimuli. Hear me. So the issue is, we have an inability to separate our emotional state from our activity state. And that prevents us from doing what's right, even when we don't feel like it. It prevents us from being productive, even when we don't feel like it. Right? When we don't feel like it. So what we have to do is be able to do what's right, to be productive, to do the, the good thing, to, to be positive when we don't necessarily feel fully positive. So to separate that state, we have to either reject negativity, right, to keep that scale tilted. The other thing we can do is substitute the current external stimuli for a surrogate stimuli. Okay? What do I mean by that? The simplest, the most straightforward example I can give you guys is studying. Because how many of you guys hate studying? Let's be honest. I'll wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to give you guys a pause. Type quickly. How many of you guys do not like studying? When I say studying to you, you're like, ooh, sour face. Ooh, tummy grumbles. How many of you guys do not like studying? How many of you guys dislike school? You find it stressful. You find it overwhelming. You find it to be a negative experience. So when you go to sit down to study, you are miserable. You can't wait for it to be done. Okay? Perfect. Thank you guys for being honest. I appreciate you honesty in the box. I see you, Essential. I see you, uh, Parita. I see you, Andrew. I see Gabrielle. I see you guys. I appreciate y'all being honest. Okay? It's okay if you don't like studying. It's okay. You can still be a consistent high-level studier. And the way you do that is by tying studying and replacing it in your mind's eye with a surrogate stimuli. You guys ready? I myself, when I sucked at studying, when you're bad at studying, when you're inefficient, when you're ineffective, that's why you, well, most people hate studying. When you get great at studying, you love studying. I love to study. I still love to study. There's a competition for a test. I can't wait to sign up for a test because I'm going to kill everybody. I'm going to destroy everybody in this test. I'm going to murder the curve. It's going to be amazing, right? That's how I feel. But for a lot of you guys, I can't just say, hey, be good at studying and then you'll feel better about it. That's right, because you can't get there. I mean, you could if you were in right my total student transformation, my five pillars program. If you were with us and you learned my study system, you'd be a great studier, right? But maybe you're not there yet, okay? Before that, the way you can feel good and positive about studying, even if you are a crappy, no good study, studier, the way you can get there is by replacing the studying in your mind's eye with a surrogate stimuli. So when I sucked at studying, when I couldn't read well, when I was behind in all my classes, when I was trying to hide out and I felt like the imposter, all those things, the way I started to really love and enjoy studying was that I replaced it with the surrogate stimuli of current day me, of current day me. I didn't know this me 20 years ago. Golly, that's a long time ago. I didn't know this me <laughs> 20 years ago when I was going through it, when I was a bad student. I didn't know this me. But I brought that into my mind's eye. I got clear on what this studying translated to. Do you guys understand what I'm saying right now? So when I sat down to study, I didn't see, oh, I'm going to study. What I saw was I'm making myself 
the doctor. I'm making myself the respected member of my community. I'm making myself the person who empowers students by showing them that even the dumb kid, the disadvantaged kid, right? The, that kid, me, could be great. I saw that in my eye. I saw myself educating students, mentoring students. I saw that future me. I saw myself, my kids over here reading, right? <laughs> I saw my kids. I saw the life I could provide for them. I saw all these things. Does that make sense to everybody? I visualized it and I made it so real and so vivid. It's like VR. So when I would sit down to study, I was putting on these VR goggles, looking into my future life, and that replaced the studying. So I didn't see the mountains of books anymore. I saw me as a mountain of a man. And it made it awesome because I could see, oh, I'm there. I got a white coat. What? It's flossy. I saw myself there. I saw myself there. Do you guys get what I'm saying? So now I've replaced what is typically a negative stimuli with a positive stimuli. And so when I wanted to procrastinate, I couldn't because I was like, wait a minute, but then I won't be that person. I won't have that. I won't have that ability. In a more short-term sense, when you guys sit down to study, think short-term. If I get my work done today, Wednesday, I can go to that fat party Friday and not have to worry. I partied my face off in college, y'all. I had a ball. And I enjoyed every minute of it because I worked hard during the week. Right? Two hours a day, five days a week is what I did. I earned my weekends. I earned my evenings. So I would look forward to that Friday. Ooh, mark it on the calendar. Make it real. Think how I'm going to turn up, as you youngins would say. I'm going to turn up. Turn up for what? Huh? Huh? Is that what you guys say now? Zach in the building. What up? Does that make sense to everybody? It's super important. We have to replace that negative with a surrogate. Okay. The last thing I'm going to say to you guys. Are you guys all still with me? Who's still with me? Can we, can we keep going? We're at 37 minutes. Shannon's going to beat me up for being in it for 37 minutes. Okay. All right. The third thing is that we have to learn to channel unpleasant negative emotion into motivation and functional action. So the dysfunctional perspective with this one is that we say to ourselves, all negative emotions are bad. I should not be sad. I should never be mad. I should never be spiteful. I should never be jealous. I should never, I should never, never, never negative emotions. Okay. The functional perspective is negative emotions are the strongest of emotions. So I must harness them for good. Does everybody see the difference? One is I must avoid negative emotions at all costs. The other one is I know that negative emotion is strong. So I'm going to use that strength for good to propel me forward. And the way to think about this is the, that movie Inside Out. Who saw that? I got kids, so I've seen it, right? There was this little girl and she's coming to preteen and she got these little creatures who live in her head. There's like happiness, sadness, anger, some other characters. <laughs> and as a child for this girl, happiness predominates, right? And that's the core memories. But then all of a sudden sadness, right? That Debbie Downer of sadness starts touching the little core memories and they start changing to that blue, that's sad. But it makes it so that they can't get rid of them. Oh my gosh, they're locked in. Why? Because that sadness is the strong emotion. That is the strongest emotion. That's how we tie things. And so if we seek to avoid all that negativity, to forget all the negative things, we can't use them to fuel us forward. And I just saw with this Will Smith, this Will Smith, Chris Rock thing is getting deep. If you guys aren't watching, a lot of layers to it. And Shannon sent me an article today. I was like, dang, that's terribly sad. 
Um, and I'll post the link to it uh, in, in the description after this. But there's an article, and it's from an old Chris Rock interview. He's talking to Howard Stern, and he's talking about, I don't know if you guys saw this, but he was talking about how he was bullied like crazy as a child to the point of like rape-ish stuff happening to him. And they bullied him because he was small and because he was black at a white school, right? So these couple things came together, and he was bullied, right, in, in a crazy way. And so one day, he got upset, and he put a brick in his backpack. And he took that backpack to school, and when the bullies came, he hit said bully with that backpack. And then proceeded to stomp the kid and hurt the kid and do all this stuff to a point that it was very dangerous. And from that day forward, in his mind, he said, I can't get mad. I can't get angry because bad stuff will happen. And because of that, as he goes on to say in this interview, he's allowed people in his life to walk all over him. He's allowed people in his life to take advantage of him because he can never have that emotion. But sometimes we should be angry. We should be outraged. When we're mistreated, we should be fired up. But if we tell ourselves it's always negative, we can't defend ourselves. And the same thing happens with you guys, right? I've said it before, I'll say it again. I am the angry black man. Why? Because I was told because of the color of my skin. I was told because of my financial standing. I was told because of my academic difficulties that I could not be successful. And I had people tell me right to my face, my counselors, people I thought that were friends, right? That I, right, I rejected their, their negative stimuli. All these people telling me that I couldn't do something that meant everything to me. Becoming the doctor, being successful, right? Elevating my family status. I had people tell me that I couldn't be that. People tell me I was too dumb. People tell me I didn't read well enough. People tell me I didn't have the resources. I didn't have the connections. I didn't have all these things. I had people telling me these things. Okay? That stuff is hurtful. That stuff is anger inducing. That stuff will make you sad. And I've cried many a tear about it. But then I didn't force myself to let go of the anger, to let go of the sadness. No, I held it closer to my heart. And so I walk around, guys, in a state of anger, of hostility. Whoa. I visualize, I replay when these people told me those things and how it made me feel. And it fires me up, y'all. It fuels me. I've turned negative emotion into fuel. It doesn't hold me back. It doesn't make me want to quit. It makes me want to lean in and go harder. It's the reason why our coaching sessions, right? Our students will talk about it. Our coaching session is supposed to be 90 minutes. I can't remember the last time we had a 90 minute coaching session. We did two hours last night. We did like we, we just go. Why? Because when it's time to get off the coaching session and someone has a question, I go back to the feeling of when I felt alone, when I didn't feel like I had a resource, when people told me I couldn't be, and I feel like I can't leave this student in confusion. I gotta answer this question. So my anger, my sadness, my experiences, the negative makes me serve that student. All my anger, my sadness makes me do the extra work, makes me live stream after I've been gone all day, right? I can hear my daughter out there crying right now. We're going to go out there and check on her in a second. That emotion, the negative emotion that people try to avoid, I hold on to it. Oh, just let that go. I don't let anything go. I hold on to it all. Any slight, I want it all in here on my chest because I'm going to use it for good. I'm not going to go Will Smith and be all bound up and then snap on the wrong person. I use it the right way functionally to help myself and help others. And so that's where you've got to go. For me, I used to keep a list, right? I was like Ariana Stark, y'all. I used to keep a list, right, of all the people on my list of haters, of doubters. And I used to look at their face and then I used to imagine what their face would look like when I told them I succeeded. You mother, when I would look at them and be able to say, ha, you just got served. You were wrong. I was right. I imagine their faces and the sourness they would have on their face and the big smile it would put on my face. And then when I had moments where I could go back and talk to people about how I was successful and I could see their face, I held on to those I took a photographic memory, right? mental snapshots of that, that sour face I wanted to see. 
And I hold on to that. And I hold on to that. That's the power, guys, of that negativity. And I'll continue that, and I'll end this with this example, this, this section. In that same Chris Rock interview, he talked about how he ran into one of his old bullies. He was on the set of a movie, and the bully was doing security for the movie. And they saw each other. And he was just like, hey. And he walked by him. Chris Rock's like, yeah, I didn't try to get him fired or anything like that because I was directing the movie, starring the movie, and I'm Chris Rock at that point. It made me feel so good to know he was 30 feet away from me, but miles away from me in life. I was like, damn, that's good. Damn, that's good. He's 30 feet away physically, but in life, we miles away. I love that. Do you guys love that? I love that. That's the power of negativity to make you work harder, to do more, to push forward. So we have to reframe our thinking, guys. That's 45 minutes, and I won't hold you guys any longer. I hope that you guys have learned something today. I hope you have at least one of these areas where you can change from dysfunction to function, where you can build a better perspective, a better lens, a better mindset, and you can make action, not just sitting here on for the... What are you going to do right now to be different? What are you going to do right now to be better, to elevate yourself? to change your emotional state, to make today an awesome day, to make tomorrow an amazing day. That's the separator, y'all. Don't just feel good in this moment, like, oh, dark crisis, some cool stuff, whatever. What are you actually gonna do? And for many of you guys, I keep saying it, the first step is to get into one of my courses or my programs. It's simple. Successful Student Minds and Makeovers on sale in the description box. Get in there. Let's go. Let's get working. Does everybody understand? We have to be people of action. Not people of emotion, people of action. All right. Everyone, be positive, be productive, be amazing. I'm going to leave right now in this moment. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you've enjoyed this, take a second and share this with someone. Let someone know, hey, you need to watch this because life is hard. We'd be going through it. And this is something that's going to help you get through it. Share that with them. Let them know we out here. If this is your first time with me, please take a second. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, y'all. Stop faking the funk. The goodness is on my YouTube channel. 30, 45 minute videos, hour long videos, two hour long videos to teach, to instruct, to improve. Subscribe, turn on the live notifications little bell, toggle that bell so you know when I'm live action, when we add it, okay? I appreciate y'all. I thank you guys for joining us and I'll see you guys. We're gonna be back. Uh, we're gonna be doing these lives, not on Wednesday. We're gonna be moving that. So we're gonna be doing these lives on Thursday. So Thursday evenings, we're going to be live action, okay? So Thursday evening, starting next week, we're going to be live freaking action. So please come join us, hang out, get better. Everyone have a wonderful evening. And as always, how do we end? Is it on the t-shirt? Can we see it? Can I add it back up? No excuses, just dominate, guys. You guys got this in, you get it done, y'all. Have a wonderful, wonderful, amazing, amazing evening. That's it for another episode of the Study Doc Show. Show your love by smashing the like button and commenting in the box below. Today is the day, guys. No more excuses. No more complaining. You're going to take your future into your own hands. You're going to dominate. You're going to be successful. I challenge you. What are you going to do today to make your life better? Get to my website, thestudydoc.com. Grab a free ebook. Sign up for a free webinar. And if you're really ready to transform, enroll in one of my life changing courses or coaching programs. You have greatness inside you. Let me show you how to unlock it so you can dominate and make your dreams a reality. No excuses, just dominate.